Hello, good evening. Oh my God, you guys are already here. Um, you can hop over to the chat room and say hi. I see that I have Deborah and Alexina and Pat. That is my Pat. And Marie, can I tell you, Marie, how much I love you and, and how much I love that you're always liking my posts and my photos on my side. I'm always like, oh, she is so sweet. What can I do to say thank you for that? So this is my thank you. Thank you for going in and seeing my stuff and liking it and giving me like nice comments. I appreciate it a lot. So we are here. Hi, class number three. Da, da, da. I'm so excited and I am so tired. How was your guys' day? Hi, Arvin. I love it. Homer, Alaska. Alexina, how are you? Um, how are you guys doing? Have you been doing your um, all your cleaning? Because I've been Daniel Provencal. I hope I say it why. Um, I was cleaning my backyard. Um, my friends, we got some new furniture. Mikal is here. Michael! Mm -hmm. Um, hey, Michael. Hello. Let me stop presenting this so we can see you. Hi, Michael. You, you, you cannot hear me? You oh see, I wear this. Uh, there we go. I had <laughs> muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear myself double now. All right. Plug you know, it. I wear the same top for both classes just for, continu you know, for continuity. Um, Ir Man, Irvin, I've been planting. My allergies are attacking me. My nose is red. My eyes are itchy. I was working in my yard. I finally planted my veggies. So I will have some stuff this summer. Michael, do you have any vegetables in your backyard? Um, we had an orange tree and we had some sugar cane. Really? Yep. But uh, sugar cane, that's interesting. Sure, sugar cane grows like a weed, though. So down here in Florida, it's a nice climate for it. You got to be really careful. Wow. And, and then we had these pepper trees as well, but that we had to had to cut all that down. Okay. Hey, so you're going to see some my guests. Hey, Stefan, turn around and say hi. Hey, hi. this is Stefan. He works at uh, Properly, and he's here staying at my house. <laughs> and now awesome. everybody's seeing you. Look, from Australia. Um, so, Irvin, you said that you were uh, planting some stuff, and Marie, you were preparing for a photo shoot. So, Marie, do you, do, do you get a lot of photo shoots in your space besides Airbnb guests? It seems that way. So it's always, um, I actually had a week shoot for all recipes videos. I don't know if you guys know of all recipes or um, are you a little foodier than that? I actually go for all recipes. They have some good recipes for in allrecipes.com. Did you cook, Michael? Um, on occasion, my wife likes to do most of the cooking. She likes to do everything from scratch, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. I've uh, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I make this amazing key lamb pie, and the recipes from there so good that my friends' kids ask for it to take it to their school. You know, like pie day or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, and of course, that's all you have to tell me. It's like, oh my god, can we just get you pie? And I'm like, of course. You know, <laughs> they're not my kids, so I don't have kids. So, so the, it becomes this like, of course, yes, please. I'm going to give you anything you want. Yeah, he's spoiled. Uh, oh, so they want to come back in, in August. That, Marie, that is a great side business. And I'm hoping that you ask for more money than a normal day for an Airbnb guest. Because I don't know how many people you had um, in the UK. Do you get to keep the furniture? That's my question. <laughs> oh, hey, dude. I, was I come from advertising. 
Yeah. No, exactly. No, no. And, and they're not going to sell it. it. It came for shoot, so they don't sell it. Um, and we've I've had shoots where it's like from sofas to TVs and things like that. It's like, oh, who wants it? Or who wants to buy it for like a lot cheaper than, than anything else? But yeah, I had a shoot for all recipes. Uh, they were shooting the recipes for their website. And they did a week in my house and it paid well. And the great thing about it was like very tight shots because it's all cooking. So it's like really tight of, you know, the cooking pots and things like that. Yes, Marie. That's what I'm talking about. $2,000 for one day. Yay. Making some money. Um, yeah, exactly. Doesn't hurt to ask. The only thing I say is no. I mean, it, is, it must be great furniture, especially if they pay you that much money. You know, it's not like the, the cheapest stuff. Uh, prices for anything there are in your house. Yes. Well, um, Irvin, what you actually do is they have insurance. And what, what you do is you ask them to add you on their certificate of insurance, but they have to have their own um, insurance themselves for anything that happens in your house. If you have a shoot or photo shoot, anything like that, they have to have additional insurance. And in, I think it's up to a million dollars, if not more. And what they do is they add you your home as part of it, of the insurance package. Or at least that's what I used to do as a producer. Oh, you didn't get to keep it. I could have negotiated to keep the furnace rather than get paid the furniture. Wow! $1,500 each? Oh, oh my God. Okay, you're going to have to like later on send me a link and the photos or something like that or, you know. Wow! Yeah, look, when they come in August, you could just say it. I also done it already to commercial. I also add on for the electric. Yes, you have to add on for the electrical unless they have a generator and things like that. And commercials are just really disruptive and they could destroy a lot of things. I've done a few commercials in the house and things like that. Yeah, sixteen hundred dollars for each day. Yeah, and that's actually not that expensive. That's that's not bad at all. Um, they don't want inside my house. They are only setting up and shooting outside on the patio. Run. But yes, totally. I mean, if it's it's a furniture store for outside. That's what they want to do. And look, um, how did they find you, Marie? I'm sorry, I'm just fascinated. I, I get fascinated by things like that because it's sort of like you make a nice chunk of change <laughs> on one day um, without a lot of disruption, hopefully. If it's a shoot in your house, they have a lot of disruption. I had a, I think it was it A&E, a TV channel. They wanted to shoot something. They wanted to throw a piano from the roof of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yes, you need to ask how many staff, not just the crew members, but how many actors, how, how much space they're going to use, the hours, you you tell them what kind of space they're going to use, are they going to bring trailers, are they going to be blocking the streets, are they going to be using your driveway, it's all of that, because, because it could be really complicated. Um, I mean, I've worked in the advertising industry and I've worked on a couple of feature films and productions and things like that, but that was my previous career for over 20 years. And they find you on Airbnb? Yes, yes, I love it. They might have to start putting that in your descriptions. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, you could be like, hey, I'm available for shoots, contact me, and things like that. And not just on your description, but there are websites for locations. So you might want to contact some location scouts on your neighborhood and your in in your state, um, and they could use it, and they could totally, you know, if you are willing to have a shoot in your house, then you could just give them your property, and they they'll take photos and take, yeah, believe me, two thousand dollars, nothing to to bark at. Yes, I I know, um, I actually get a lot of people asking for free stuff. Yeah, no, I love it. No sheets, no bedding, no laundry, and no cats. We love them, but we love to see them go. All right, it's 8.06. Let's start this. And today we are starting. We have Michael Johnson over here. We got to call, we love to call him Michael. Just got him That's really, right. really loud. Um, so first of all, let me just start. Let me start presenting to everybody so I, they know what we're doing today. Okay, so today we are talking class three of cleaning your description. It is Wednesday, May 11th. Um, yeah, one more class to go. All right, so first of all, um, this is not an Airbnb event. 
we are not sponsored by them. They don't know about me. They, you know, none of that stuff happens. Um, we please no multitasking. I appreciate it. Turn off Facebook and, you know, your iPhone and your games and things like that. And you will get the checklist. You will get all of this like you've gotten in the past. So don't worry about it. You know, don't have to write notes. Let me introduce you to Mr. Johnson. So he, Michael has been offering search engine optimization and internet marketing since 1999. Um, and he has helped tons of clients by optimizing their online sales processes. He is, oh no, please, Marie. It, I love, it's great version. I'm sorry, let me just, just tell Marie. It is fine. It is a great way to also introduce people that there is other sources of income besides just your guest. So um, go check on them and come back. And L, you know I love you. Um, all right, so Michael, he's an expert in selecting and implementing the most effective tools and applications uh, for digital landscape. I met Michael in Vegas when I was just there about two months ago, and I kidnapped him and told him about you guys, and you know, and actually he teaches a class right after hours, Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night at nine o'clock, so we'll be finishing before then so that I can hop onto his class, Okay. Uh, and just in case you want to go there, Michael, do you want to pop your Facebook group so they will know it? Sure. Not that you click in there now. I'm just saying. All right. You know this. Can you please make this slide clearer at your end? Um, are you seeing my slides clearer, um, Michael? Somebody's complaining. Uh, I, possibly. It, it might be that when, whenever we resize the photo, my photo ended up a little blurry. Let me just let me go to the next yeah, slide and see. Is it is it okay? I didn't that was, do anything. That was better. That was okay. Better. All right. So as you know or not know, I started Airbnb in 2010 when the economy you know shifted. Um, and if you haven't seen that movie, the short sale, you should see it. Really good. All right. I found Airbnb and I started speaking about Airbnb and my story, and that's Brian Chesky right behind me. When I was speaking at one of the events, I have spoken to the press, I've spoken at the state legislator and the city council many a times. There's actually a video where I'm almost crying telling my story. It's on my website, yeah, no shame. In 2014, I started um, the consultation of Evelyn Badia, talking about Airbnb because not everybody wants to hear about sheets and dirty towels. And in 2015, I was honored to go to the and be a host educator at the Airbnb Open in Paris. I am hoping to be in the LA class this year. So, you know, I actually want to be on the big stage. Now, today we're going to talk about reviews and how they work on your description, about this listing and your description as a total. All right? So... Now, you're about, okay, so this is a review from your guests, and you are awesome host already, and most of you already have not just have been doing this for a long time, and you have your reviews and everything else, okay? So this is a standard review from a guest, and what happens is, if you notice the language that he starts using, I'm going to start pulling words from him. And from there, I'm going to start building my about this listing, all right? So he says spacious, ample supplies. The next one says nicely designed, comfortable, on-site attention. And all of these are words that if I go back to a lot of my reviews, if you do some research and what, that was one of the reasons why you had homework to pull your reviews out, you start seeing the words that makes them happy. They do not say how fast the Wi-Fi is. They don't say, oh, I love my queen size bed. No, they say spacious, supplies, nicely designed. So you don't even have to really think about what kind of language to use because you're going to use your guest language. This is what they look for. And then from there, I created my about this list, um, about this listing 
paragraph, which is right underneath your photos, is one of the most important things that your guests see. Because your guests will see the photo, and right underneath it is going to be the, your about this listing paragraph, okay? Sometimes they don't go all the way down to your description, and they just stay there, and then they will contact you. All right. So from there, as you see, I use a lot of, I pepper the language on my about this listing. Beautifully designed, it's spacious, comfortable for big groups. You'll be pampered with on-site attention and curated in your guidebook. My, they love my guidebook and it's actually reviewed a lot. Um, it's the house manual that I created. Now also for the listing name, I use the same method. I go back into the reviews and I pulled out information to use it as my listing name. I am not using, and I don't have to come up with some words, I don't have to come up with a lot of stuff because my guests are telling me exactly what's important to them. Now, with this, so let's go into the about this listing. That first sentence needs to do not repeat the listing name adjective. So if you're using spacious and comfortable on your listing name, do not repeat it on the about this listing as the first sentence, okay? Highlight something unique about your home or your street or your neighborhood. What sets your home apart? What's unique or special? What have you done to create this space? Is it magical? Is it quiet? Is it spacious? Is it, you know, a little heaven in the city? So all of these things, and they will mention this. The client, your guests will say this. Um, it's amazing when I look at people's listings, and when I go to the reviews, how the, the words are just there, okay? Now, if, is it a historic district that you live in? They like to know. Like, one of the things they love in Brooklyn is a brownstone. I don't have a brownstone. I have a little frame house, so I don't mention that. But if you have a brownstone, put that in your description. Put that on about this listing. It's a scenic. It's a surrounded by nature. It's a steps to fun. Is it true oceanfront? Because some people say oceanfront, but they're like two blocks from it, and you actually have to stick your head out the window to see a sliver of ocean. <laughs> but if like these buildings are true oceanfront, you should say that on your listing, on about this listing, or also on your headline, okay? Now, use the language. So we're going to be using the reviews. Is it kid friendly? Is it great for families? So you see that when they mention it's good for families and groups, I mentioned that on about this listings. Okay. Um, is it, again, do you have pets? Do you allow pets in your house? That's a big market. A lot of people traveling with pets. Not everybody accepts them. I don't, but it's a great thing. All right. Is it off the beaten path? Is it great for adventures? And all of this stuff, you're going to be mentioning it to them. So you're going to mention benefits instead of a list, okay? So the list will normally go like this. It goes with, like, Elsa large bedroom, sleeps two on a firm, king-size bed. There's a hair dryer. There's an iron. Mind you, there's no commas there. And I grabbed this from somebody's listing. This is, I didn't make this up, okay? So an Airbnb host out there has this. Um, it's two blocks from the subway, many restaurants, process, but there's really no story here. You're just giving me a laundry list. Instead, you go back and you say, it's light-filled, it's airy, it's a broken brownstone, it's spacious. So all of this, you're saying the same information, but you're saying it in their language, okay? And I don't know if you could hear my guests that are at home, but, you know, just in case. I'm sorry about that. It's an old house. All right. Um, and Michael, we have talked about SEO and search engine and what the guests, and if you want to like jump right in. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with, with search engine optimization and how this kind of applies to what you're doing with Airbnb, uh, is the, the language becomes really, really important. Um, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, they, they think of search engines and they think of Google immediately. Uh, well, the process of search engine optimization involves pretty much every search engine that's out there. So Facebook has a search engine, Google has a search engine, right? Airbnb has a search engine. A lot of the really large sites have it. So they'll have a specific way that they are going to filter the information. And when you think about uh, writing your listing and the words, I, I, I love how you're actually going and using the words from the review. So that's a, that's a great thing. 
Um, if you're not very creative, look at not only your reviews, but also the reviews of similar, um, similar listings that are in or outside of your area, and even the ones that are in your, your neighborhood, and the ones that apply for you, use those words again within in there. Now, you don't want to get uh, you don't want to get really, really um, flowery with your language where a person doesn't understand what's being written on, on the page. Um, one, of the, one of the studies that was done a, f a few years back was trying to figure out what was the average reading level for people here in the United States. And they found out that it was the eighth grade level, right? So one of the, one of the tools that I use uh, online with my search engine optimization to make sure that it's readable for people of all, all walks of life is a tool called Grammarly. And so this little, this little tool, and I'll go ahead and pull this, uh, this into the chat there. Um, we'll, we'll check things like the commas that you mentioned before. Uh, making sure that they're in in the right place, but also check the reading level, uh, and you want to make sure, like I said, it's going to be uh, like the eighth grade or below, which really means that a 13 and 14 year old should be able to read this and understand what it is. So if if you have teenagers in the house um, or you know some, have them come over and read your listing. If they don't understand the word, take it out and find something else. Uh, and, that, and that's probably the best way to understand how, how the search engine optimization works is you make it for the person that you're trying to attract and then exclude everybody else and make sure the language is easy to understand. And, and in addition to that, what you have to remember, your market is not just the United States. You're talking to people that are coming from overseas that were English by not their first language. And I know that Airbnb translates things, but you want it to be ease of use. Um, Lori, you're saying that you have three rooms in the same house. Should I have similar words? Not necessarily, um, but you're probably going to be attracting the same kind of people. But I mean, what you do is go through your reviews and see what they're saying. Is one room quieter than the other? Is one room spacious? Is one room light filled? So what you do is you try to go into that um, and, and see what your guests are saying for that special for your for each listing because that will totally help you out and i'm thank you Lori. you said you i'm a reading specialist of course i want to know what that means because i don't know what that means what's a reading specialist is it an editor is a copy editor is a copywriter because you know i like to read but i will never consider myself a reading specialist <laughs> and michael thank you for the grammarly tip you're welcome um so, you know, instead of that list of amenities, create a story, people are visual, let them see the space, okay? And not just do a laundry list of things that you have there, okay? There was also a study done, um, and I read one of the articles from Airbnb, where listings that had grammatical errors were not getting as booked as, um, as much as listings that were correct. Just letting you know. I teach people who hold to how to read. Okay, how to read. <laughs> Love that. Yes, paint a picture with words, please. All right. Now, on your description, I want you to think about consistency. What's crucial? We're going to talk about three and two things and adjectives. Okay. So, consistency. If you're saying that you have ocean view, and I and I want to stole this from one of the Airbnb hosts. Uh, look at that great photo. It's perfect. Mind you, her pool, which is what she was trying to mention here, got cut off and it said poo. So I'm going to think poo, okay? <laughs> so make sure that you are using correct words and that you have the same am amount of characters and things are not getting chopped off, all right? Um, so maybe, you hey, know, uh, what was that, Michael? <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to add one thing in there. Uh, I, I chuckle every time, every time I see the, the poo there. But um, you know, as Lori is mentioning, paint you know, paint a picture with the words. So one thing that you can do um, is if you have like, for example, like the ocean view with the beachfront. Think of words that people use to describe their experience at the beach, and then use that in describing your rooms as well, right? So when somebody goes out there and they're talking about the 
you know, crystal clear waters and, and how calm and relaxing it is, use that same type of language within your, uh, within your listings as well. And that keeps with the consistency as well as from the visual and the written consistency. Yes, and last week's class in the photo class, I mentioned to you guys to use the guest language, their actual reviews as part of your captions. So what, what you do in this, you just telling them your guests that there's a third party that is proving your space, that is saying, yes, this is great. Um, I have read in the Facebook group that we have for the challenge, someone was showing her place, it's a, it's a tree house. And someone wrote in her reviews that it was like a storybook. And I was like, oh my God, you need to say that. Or you're about this listen. What's the name of the listen? It's like, it's like they're giving you the language. They're telling you exactly what to use. Believe me, I always think people are smarter than me, especially my guests. You know, they're totally smarter. So they have better language than I do. Now, things that are crucial that you have to describe on your description is the space if they're only getting a room um the house the neighborhood what's your transportation like if you have roommates if you have pets if you have other guests in the space like laura you have three bedrooms that you're renting and i imagine that in each one of those bedrooms you mentioned that they are sharing the house with other guests. So there's no surprises that when they walk in through your door, they expecting maybe just you as a roommate and they're sharing a bathroom with, you know, six other people or five other people or something like that. Um, you know, so, so go and make sure that you have that information. If you have a pet, in addition to have a photo of your pet within your listing, you need to make sure that you say it in your description. I've ha I almost rented a place in Paris and all she had was like checked off the box of pits live here. And I only, and I, it was an oversight on my part, but I almost booked the place and I'm really allergic to cats, but a guest mentioned it. And that was the only place where there was any written word, no photos of the cat or anything like that, that there was a cat in the environment. And I would have been really upset, okay? So make sure that your guest knows the truth about your space, all right? Now, if you have any special amenities, you mention it on your description, an elevator, a pool, not poo, but a pool, mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi, and anything else that makes it special. Do you have a lake views? Do you have ocean views? Do you have anything? Are you ADA? I have guests that do ask me that they might have mobility issues and if your house is an ADA house, um, you know, it will be, it, those are things that you could list, all right? Um, yeah, no, they, yeah, exactly, Lori, they don't, people don't read, we don't read. It's, it's just amazing how we don't read. And because we don't read, we also are gonna talk about how you go about writing your description, but, in addition to the above, you want to write about how the proximity to restaurants, to supermarkets, any tourist attraction. And Michael, you could talk about that, um, how the, important it is to have the tourist attractions on your description. Yeah, absolutely. So when, whenever you, um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of the conversions. How do you actually get people to pick your listing over somebody else, right? And part of it, again, so you're using the language of, the person who's staying at your at your um, listing, um, but the other part is when you have your guests come through, pay attention to the ones that you really like and the ones that you don't like, right? And the ones that you really like, make sure that you find out why they're there and and the reason why they picked your listing over everybody else, and then you can start including that that stuff in there. So, for example, if I'm a business traveler and I'm going through. Uh, and and you know I'm I'm I have a lot of things that I have to do. I'm going to be uh, working late and constantly on the move. I I don't have time to be sitting in traffic, so I want to take the train. Um, listing that type of information in your listing, like you know, five five minutes to whatever train it is. We have a 24-hour uh, Italian place around the corner, or whatever uh, you know, restaurants, supermarkets, any type of attraction that's close by all become important to either the business traveler or somebody who's there on a casual vacation stay or just kind of traveling around. 
Um, so highlight those things and, and do it by paying attention to the people that you like the most. Include that type of language in it because you'll attract more of those people. And hopefully we didn't lose Evelyn there. Because I have muted myself. Ah, uh, there, uh, there we go. So, um, you know, if you have like late check in that you are available to check in late, like I have a lockbox, so my guests could check in at any time they want to. I don't have any problems with that, because sometimes a guest has a midnight flight and they're right. They're not going to land to your house until two o'clock in the morning, and they worry about that. So, if you have that kind of flexibility, let put it on your listing, put it on your description, let them know. Okay, now, um. The addition to that is you want it to be easy to read or basically to be skim. Like they're going to just skim through it. They're not really going to go. Wait, I don't know if you guys have been, and please tell me if you have been a guest and looked through Airbnb to, for a place. Um, because as a guest, when you're looking for a place, you're looking at multiple listings. You're going through photos at least this is the first the first thing i do is i go through photos i do my um my filters i go through full to through photos to see what i'm saying seeing then i'll click on the description but, but by the time i've seen three or four i don't remember who's who or what's what um and then i'll i'll narrow it down i contact those hosts and remember you're getting contacted but they're contacting a couple of other hosts as the same people um, and believe me, Anna, I am a host and sometimes I read it, sometimes I read a little bit more details, sometimes I don't. Um, sometimes just there's barely a description there, okay? So know that your guest is not going to read a detailed novel. So you want it easy. Bullets, short sentences, short paragraph, proofread it. Um, have like what you do is you create sessions, sort of like roommates, details. Um, and list things of your home, so like that. It, some people have even created an FAQ, frequently asked questions session within their description. So like that, all those questions are answered there, and it's easy for your guests. Okay, so that that's really important because they're not going to read. All those things. Um, if you have, this is a tip from Chip Conley, the head of hospitality of Airbnb. And one of the things that he gave us on his talk was tell your guests three things they love and three things they will. I mean, and two things they will not like. So, for example, do they love the views? They love the comfort. They love how trendy it is. So you're going to read your reviews again, and you're going to go back to them, and you want to see what is it that your guests love about your home. But then, what is it that they don't like about your home? Is it that you have a cat? Is it that you have a five, a five flights to walk upstairs? For me, it's like it's not a private apartment. They share with me um, that they don't, there's no private bathroom. Even though there is two bathrooms, there's not, they're not private. They have to share them with me. Or I'm not in the city. But I could turn that into a positive because I could say I'm not located in Manhattan. But what will wake you up are the birds and not the sirens. So it is a negative for some people because they want to be staying in the city where the action is at, where they're not be taking the trains. But some guests want to stay where it's peaceful and quiet and it's not that energy of Manhattan. So you could turn whatever negative you might have into a positive, but you have to let your guests know. Your guests cannot show up to your house and see they might have crutches and they see in that it's a five flights of stairs, okay? Or they might have mobility issues. And I stayed at a place in San Diego where he never said that there was flights, a, a big set of flights to his house and then inside to the bedroom. So it was a, a bit of a surprise, okay? But of course, he, he was a test for me because he didn't have even house rules, all right? So let your guests know. Now, this is a list of adjectives, and these adjectives, I'm giving it to you as a checklist, so you don't have to worry about it, but this is a list of like things that you could utilize in your language um, to describe your space from breathtaking, captivating, delightful, beautiful. Mind you, if you are using this language, if you're using elegant, it has to be an elegant space. 
It cannot be, you know, thrift store furniture that you found on the corner. All right. That will be a different adjective for it. A one of a kind or unique. So if you if you're using the words luxurious, lush, refined, that's the expectation that your client is going to have. Exactly, Laurie's saying eclectic. Exactly, you could say eclectic. Um, you could say unique, you could say different things. Look, my guests love to call my house cozy. Some people don't like the word cozy. Eh, for me, it's I neither here or there. Um, so, but you, these are just adjectives that you could use on describing your home for your guests. And again, your guests, you should you should look through your reviews and go back there. Michael, anything else that you want to say? And this has adjectives from like neighborhoods to location to like I have a whole list for you guys. Okay, so yeah, that, and, that's a that's a great list. I love it. Um, you know, I would combine the list of adjectives, obviously, with the language that they're using um, within the reviews uh, that you're finding, uh, both with your reviews and, and the research that you do as well. Uh, I think, you know, I've probably harped on it enough tonight, but it's it's that important that it needs to be restated, um, that if, if you want the best people coming to your listing, it's all about using the words that they are going to use in their normal conversation. And the best place to find that is going to be in the re reviews that they leave you um, and that they also leave that your comp leave with your competition that apply directly to your listing. So um, I think that's the best. And, and actually, I'm looking at the time I need to run I know you need I have to, to prep. I have to prep for the, for the next training here. Oh, um, yes. And I so, will be there at 9 o'clock. All right. Well, you know, be sure to answer all the questions here first before you run run over there. Um, do Do you mind if I put the link for Facebook group no, no, in no, one more time? Do. Please do. So the uh, the Facebook group link uh, I'm putting it in the chat again, um, and it, really what we do is we focus over there on um, simple action steps to run a successful online business. And so since you are using Airbnb, to me it's an online business, and there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, we have weekly webinars on Wednesday nights um, and and Evelyn is a part of them as well so I, I thank you for inviting me I, I love being here today and, and yesterday as well I really appreciate it thank you Michael for being here and I will be seeing you like at 9 or 5 I'll be right okay there. sounds good all right thank you all right so host we still have a couple of things different things to do one of them is to go through your listings and do you have any questions um, and Lori is saying that she gets real New Orleans home, which is not what I think. So for you, your home might not be New Orleans. I mean, it might not be what you want your guests to say. But for them, it is. And it's what they want. They want to have a true New Orleans experience, okay? Um, so do you guys have any questions? And if you want me to look at your listing, you know what you have to do. You have to give me your URL. Um, so... Look at that. We are going through this class pretty quickly today. Uh, and we have Alexina. Alexina, just like, okay, I am going to go through your listing for a minute. And, oh, this is beautiful. All right, let's 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 share it with the room so everybody sees it. Ta-da. Ta-da. Alejandra was... There was an oh, are you? I hope you're okay, Alejandra. You're saying there was an earthquake. Uh, where are you located at? Um, all right, so look at the, the words here. And I love you, I love Alexina. You're you are a super host. Um, you use private bath, private bath trumps anything and everything else on a private bedroom, okay? Oh, in Mexico, Alejandra, espero que todo esté bien. Um, thank you for being here and, and I hope everybody's safe. All right. Um, I actually love this, um, photo that you have here and your furniture, it just feels so original and, and just such a beautiful bedroom. It's very, it looks very comfortable. Um, the room was beautiful. Exactly. The bed was comfy and there was all the amenities that we needed. Ah. 
I love it. Oh my God, it's such a great apartment. Um, very clean, beautiful. Okay, this photo here, um, I'm gonna say, um, Alexina, for can you please get take it on a horizontal way, which is basically a hamburger way. So just turn over your camera and take that picture again so you see it better. You see how the other photos, okay, no, we're back. You have this also as vertical. Um, you see how this one is horizontal, so I would like you for, to do the same on the other photo just because it's a great piece of furniture and you want to actually show it, show it off. Um, and you could do the same thing here. Oh, this is great that you show the amenities that you that you provide. This is a great thing. Beautiful. Uh-huh. Double luggage. Okay. Oh, so do you cook for your guests? This is a beautiful home. What I would say here is something about do you allow them to use the piano? Are they allowed? Yes, I know. Oh, that's a great thing. Uh so you have great photos, and let me just see, immaculately clean and beautifully designed master bedroom with ensuite private bathroom, uh, driveway, parkway for small, medium car. We're super host. We'll be sharing a neighborhood home with select guests from around the world for 12 plus years. So you've been doing this for, for a long time. I love it how you use it immaculately because it's not just clean. It's super clean. Um, not everybody might know what he means, but... I think it's great that you're saying it here. Um, you could probably change this a little bit more and just paint it a little bit more as a picture um, instead of just a list of things. So you see like, you know, let the softest sheets create a luxury of sleeping. Oh, this is, this is fantastic. So you have all of this language that your guests are saying, um, you know, in the quiet neighborhood. So, Use that for your about this listing, all right? Um, and if you have the TV that hides it, I will have a photo. I don't know if you have it later on because I'm just seeing more photos of um, San Francisco. Okay, so you might want to show a photo of that on your first five photos as well. Um, you're showing, you see how it's, it's basically in the, if you should go and listen, I don't know if you listened to the last class, but go back and, and, and get different photos here for the last, the next five photos after the first one. So you have priority. Okay. So now hamburger. Yes, exactly. Hamburger, hot dog. Um, I, I learned that from humans of New York. All right. So. That was Alexina, and let me <laughs> let me go to Lori. Lori wants us to show. Stop. Let me go here. All right. Oh, this is vibrant. I love this. Very nice and colorful. All right, guys, let me show you. Let me show you what I see. I've never had the professional photography. Alexina, grab the professional photography and get it. You actually have excellent photos for them not being professional. But also getting Airbnb's free photography brings you up in the algorithm. So you want that. All right. Lori is also super host, of course. Um, twin says bed, join together, make, okay. I wish the windows were open. And I want to know what's behind these two windows. Is it? Um, was it that it was too bright? Well, the verified photos. Was it too bright, um, Lori? I want to know about that. This is great. I love how bright and colorful it is. Um, it's so beautiful downstairs. This is the only TV in the house, but you're welcome to use it. Okay, so you are letting them know. The pantry, a small desk is available. A Wi-Fi is available through the house. Okay. I will have that. I will put those photos ahead. So you see what happens is that this, the second photo is not telling me really nothing new about the space that the first photo is not showing. So what I will do is that second photo, I will change it to another part of the uh, room that shows like the desk or something like that. All right. And then in reference of your, about this, the library, the, the libraries, Two comfortable beds can be combined as a cane mini fridge. 
Um, do you have any photos, Lori, of the room actually? Well, you know what? Then you should mention that, um, that the darkening shades and that, you know, you will be sleeping like a baby. Airbnb at a little. Can you get the photographer? No. You asking me, Brony is asking me, can you get the photographer again? I think it has to be three years. Um, so what I do is I have changed my house a few times um, after that, but I've kept one photo. Like my bathroom really did not change. So yeah, so I will put a picture of them as twins. Take the photo yourself, just just so like that people know exactly what it is. Yeah, so they they what I've heard is every three years, and it doesn't even give me that option on my on my uh, when I go to ask for photography. Because I really need new photography done for my Airbnb. I actually hire a photographer to do my photos for my space. Because with Airbnb photography, you do not own the photos. And you want those photos for marketing, okay? So, um, we were talking, the library is too comfortable, but it can be combined as a key mini fridge. I see. So, you see how you're just using, here's the list of things. What I want you is to go back and read your reviews and see what are you guys saying um you know they're not giving you a list of things you know so so it's sort of like it's a nice home the beds are very comfortable feel at home the community things like that and go and see you know be be spoiled by an attentive host on site um lori now you tell me that you also have other spaces as well right you're listing more than um or do you only have one? Well, hold on. Let me just go to you. I'm dying to go to New Orleans. I'm actually, I might be going to New Orleans. All right. So you have multiple rooms in your home. And my recommendation is very for you to say that, that there are multiple rooms and that they will be sharing. This is great. Love that. Love how bright it is. Wow. Oh, my God. This is a great house. So beautiful. Wait, Lori, are they, I'm actually, I might be going down in June. A friend of mine is moving, a friend of his, actually, who designed my house is going down, and I'm thinking of coming. If I go, we'll do a meetup of, of house, so like that. You know, we do like a New Orleans meetup. I try to do them wherever I go. All right. Yes, your description, your about this listen has limited amount of words. So you need to be careful about what you use, but you want to paint the picture. You don't want it to just be a list of items. All right, guys, my ladies, you don't want it just to be like two other rooms. So Lori, if you are renting more rooms in your listing, so if, if it's not just them in your house, you need to be really clear about that, that you're sharing the space with other guests, that you're sharing the bathroom, if, if that's the case. So be very clear because um, I didn't see it from your listing. I sort of like even looking through it, um, you know, on, on the about this listing, it should be there. And it also should be there on one of the captions of the photos, okay? All right, so look, I... I want you guys to know that I am here for you. I really, one of the reasons I love doing this and is because I know how it is about hosting. I, I've been doing this for over six years and I know how hard it is. I know how, you know, yes, it's easy in the sense that you put up the photos and you're just start getting a booking, but then you start realizing, well, there's some things that I just don't know and I want you to succeed. One of the things that I use that I've created with my team was a house manual template. Um, it was a great tool. My guests review me on it all the time. They mention how amazing it is because it is a great, great thing. I create from a house manual where it has all the information for your house. So all you do is, is already design. And all you do is plop in your information from your welcome information to house rules. Any question your guest has you will put it in this house manual all right it has multiple header themes landscapes city um city it has city themes but you could also create your own as you see this is my dearest uh, host and he is in florida and he has he's a naturalist and so he's 
place is called Naked Palms. He's naked. And so his book is shows that. All right. And you could do from sunsets to chickens if you don't want to show your buns. Um, in addition to the house manual, you also get a neighborhood book uh, template so that you can add the restaurants and activities that are near you. And also there's a transportation template for you to add trains and airports and believe me, taxis and bikes and all oh my. In addition, it includes a step-by-step -step instruction. It's formatted in Kino PowerPoint in Word. And it's only a one-time payment of $39. You, you download it and you play with it as much as you want to. You use it. You can use it for all your listings or for as many as you have or not have. It lives on your computer. You print it out and put it on a binder. And next week, I'm actually going to talk all about list uh, the house manual. I'm going to show you my house manual. I'm going to tell you exactly what goes in it. Um, and how I've even grown it to itineraries, uh, which my guests love. I tell them exactly where to go, what to do, and you know, because I'm bossy that way. So if you have any questions, please ask me. And I was present. I wasn't presenting to all oh, you, love you guys. Damn it! Look, I was showing you like all of this, and I did not present it. Did I not show you? Like, did you not see his bungs? <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't press the right button. So, um, yeah, so this is this is the house manual template. It's a great thing. And please do go. You could go and pick it up at my site, evelynbadia.com. Do you guys have any questions? It's 848. We have gone through this class pretty quickly. Um, any questions, my dear hosts? If not, I'm going to see you next week on Tuesday or Wednesday night. Next week is going to be our last class on this challenge. I'm also going to be sending you, you a little survey to see what else you want me to teach in the future. I've thought about doing a class on marketing, a class about creating your own website, from creating your um, a website to creating a Facebook group, and how to go market your listing beyond Airbnb, just to go to a different. So that might be a challenge. It might be a private challenge or not. Um, if you guys are interested, but I'm going to be giving you guys um, a survey to ask you what do you want for next time and what do you want for the future. All right. So do you have any questions, my dearest? No questions. Look at that. Oh, I'm so sorry. No questions here. I think I have Bonnie wanting a request. Okay, Bonnie, I think you're on. Tanya, I'm so glad you're enjoying the classes. Thank you so much. I will be doing a Q&A class in, um, in, in June, as well as I have a guest coming on in June for a, a very specific class that we're going to be teaching. All right? All right, guys. Thank you so much, my ladies. Have a great night. Starting a website class for sure. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm actually thinking about probably doing some private classes where it's, it's just a little group um there will be some payment and, and it's just like really really one-on-one -on -one classes privately so it's stuff that i'm thinking about for the very near future because i want us to grow as host and look like marie got some a booking through to do in a photo photography that was excellent thing so uh if no one has a question can you have I will look at the listing next week so i do two a session if not it's just gets too much too much um, but Brownie, come back next week and I will make sure that you are on. All right. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Um, and Brownie, you can always hire me. <laughs> I, I will then talk to you for a whole hour all about your listing. All right. So thank you so much and have a great night and I will see you guys next week. All right. Thank you.